Good morning, River of Life. Thank you for joining us, taking the time to listen to this message, and we trust that God would stir you and speak to you. We are continuing with our series called Move, where we really sense that God is calling us to, to action. We've been looking at the passage in Romans chapter 12 from verse 6, where the motivational gifts are listed. And this morning, we're going to be focusing on one of the last ones. It is the gift of giving. And the writer says, if your motivational gift or your gifting from God is giving, then give generously. I want to, just before we get into this, jump back just a little bit. Maybe one of the biggest mistakes that we can make as we work through this list and we look at this list is to say, but uh, this gifting is not for me. And because I am not primarily uh, motivated by giving, I don't need to pay attention to it. So for me personally, giving is not one of my primary motivational gifts. And over the years, as I've done many of these tests and looked at it, I have purposefully said to myself, but I want to grow in all of the areas. Giving will probably never be my primary motivational gift. But each time I, I look at this and I focus on this, I want to say to myself, but I am doing better. I'm focusing even on the things that are not necessarily my strengths. And over the years, I've purposefully put myself in places where I've said, but I want to give. I want to be a giver. So I want to do the same for you or encourage you to do the same. It's to look at all of these gifts, but not look at them just from the perspective of saying, this is my primary gift and I will focus just on this gift. But you understand that all of us have a responsibility in all of these areas. So let's answer a couple of questions when it comes to the gift of giving. Firstly, why do we give? What should be our motive? How do we do it? But primarily, why? That's the starting point. So firstly, we give because God is the owner of everything, and we are the owner of nothing. We are simply stewards for that which God has entrusted to us. God is the owner of everything. In First Chronicles 29, David takes up an offering for the building of the temple. And once he's taken up this offering, he's excited. Everyone has, has given in, and he's very excited. And he remarks the following in verse 14. He says, But who am I, and who are my people, that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. And David understands that even that which people have given actually comes from God. And if you are a giver, God has blessed you with resources, and He is the one who has given it to you. And when you give that to others, it's not yours that you are giving away, but it's actually God's that you are giving away. And we have given only what comes from your hand. Everything comes from God, and He is the owner of of everything. So when we give, we actually say and understand that we are not the owners. God is the owners, and as He directs and as He leads, we are simply distributing on His behalf the gifts that God has entrusted to us for a season. Second reason why we give is because we give as, as worship and as thanksgiving to God. Our worship is an offering Sorry, our gift is an offering just as worship is an offering. In 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 11, Paul writes, You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving. When we give, it leads to praise and it leads to thanksgiving. It leads to worship being expressed to God third reason I want to highlight this morning why we should give is because giving pleases God. And I always want to do that which pleases God. In Hebrews 13 verse 16 we read, And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. 
I want to be in a place where I honor God's resources that He has entrusted to me. I want to express and use the resources He's given me to express worship and thankfulness to Him. But also I want to please Him in how I deal with my finances. So how then should we give? How do we give? What are some of the attributes and the characteristics that we should look at when we give? So number one, we should give prayerfully. In 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 7, it says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. So that decide in your heart, I don't think that is just a decision that we make as humans. I don't think we wake up in the morning and decide, should I give, should I not give, how much should I give? I think that what you've decided in your heart speaks of a prayerfulness coming before God, hearing God's heart. If you are married, I believe it is very crucial that spouses should speak to each other and they should come in agreement prayerfully as to what they should give. Not under compulsion, not reluctantly. So, number one, how do we give? We should give prayerfully. Number two, the same verse in Hebrews, uh, sorry, in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7, says that we should give cheerfully. It is a joy to be able to give. We have the privilege of God blessing us, and we have the resources. And therefore, it should be a joy, and it should be cheerful when we are able to bless someone else with that which God has blessed us with. Number three, very important. When we do give, we should not seek reward. We should not seek uh, financial reward. Giving is not an investment, and we expect a certain growth on that. And if I give so much, then I should get so much in return. It should never be our motive. It should also not be our motive to seek the reward and the recognition of people. We don't do it to be seen or to be recognized. In Matthew 6, Jesus says himself from verse 2, So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, that your Father who sees what is done in secret will then reward you. I want to encourage you that when you give, that you give with the right motives, that you give because you want to respond to that which God has placed in your heart, what you've heard prayerfully from Him, and that you not do it reluctantly or under compulsion, but you do it cheerfully, but you also do it in such a way that you respect the other person to whom you are giving. And you don't do it to be seen. The last one when it comes to the motives that I want to address is that we should give with love. If we give simply because we feel we have to, and that's where the compulsion comes in. I'm, I feel forced, I have to give, and now I give. But the attitude of my heart is not an attitude of love. We read in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 3, if I give all my possessions to the poor, give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. Even if you were to give away all your possessions to the poor, but you do not give it as a response to love, firstly to God and secondly to the people that you want to bless, it actually means nothing and it achieves and gains nothing. So how should we give? We should give prayerfully, hearing from God, not under compulsion, cheerfully, in such a way that we don't seek reward, and in a way that we seek uh, to love the people whom we are giving to. I want to end by answering or asking a third question. What do I do if I don't have anything to give? What what if you are maybe sitting at home and you're saying, but I'm not primarily a, a, gift, a giver. God has not blessed me with lots of resources. What, what should I do and how should I interact? Because I don't necessarily have to give. Firstly, I want to say 
that it is not the amount that matters. So often we measure giving in, in rands. This is an acceptable gift and this is not an acceptable gift. When I am able to give five meals, then I'm doing well. But if I can only give one meal, then it doesn't measure up. And it is never about the amount. And I want to trust that that lie would be broken. Some of the most uh, best people that I've seen that operate in this area of giving maybe the best are, are exactly those people who do not necessarily have the means and the resources. It is an attitude of our heart. Second Corinthians 8 and verse 12, Paul writes, For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. So in simple language, again, Paul is just saying, it's not the amount that matters. If I only have one rand to give, and I give one rand, then that, that one rand is acceptable. It's not the amount that is important. In Mark chapter 4, we read the story of how Jesus is sitting at, at the temple, and He is watching as people bring their offering to put into the offering boxes. And He sits there and He sees Wealthy people coming in, giving large amounts of money. And then he spots a widow who comes and she drops two coins in the box. And suddenly Jesus gets very excited. He didn't get excited when a wealthy person brought a lot. He got excited when this widow gave her last two coins. It is never the amount. It is the attitude of my heart. And in that respect, I want to start by answering this question. You have something to give. We always have something to give. What we need to realize is that that small thing that we have to give carries just as much value in the eyes of God as a large gift. Secondly, God is the God who will supply seed if we are willing to give. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things and at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. God is able. And if you say this morning, but I want to give, I want to be a giver, I want God to use me in this area, then God is able to supply abundantly everything that you might need so that you can be a blessing so that you can abound in every good work. Two verses later in verse 10, it says, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. It is God who supplies seed for the sower. But it is the sower who needs to stand up and say, God, I want to be a sower. Would you enable me? Would you help me? Would you show me what I have to give? And if I have nothing to give, would you give me something to give? Jesus said, I came that you might have life. And again, you and I are called to, to step into the space where we can, we can work with Jesus. We can join with Him in His mission to bring life to people. And giving financially Giving materially is an important part of doing that. It's a valuable part in doing that, in giving that. If you are a giver, I want to thank you for your giving. I want to thank you for how you are serving people around you, serving your family, and giving generously. And I know you well enough to know that you're not doing it to be seen or to be recognized, but God sees that. And God values that. And you are joining with God in this mission to bring His life to people. Let's pray together. Father, we thank You that You have gifted us so that we can give to others. And in this specific sense, we thank You for every material blessing that You have given to us as individuals. Thank You that we have. Father, we pray that You would show us where we can give, and how we can give, so we can honor you even in this, in the way that we give. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.
I want to encourage you to share the life of Jesus, even if it means materially that you would share that with people around you as God leads you and shows you.